And finally, the uh, final observation is you have to get your supervisor just to check over the jockey wheels, which are these wheels just here. Um, she obviously doesn't want to do a job. Okay, future me here. I'm just going to interrupt the video for a second to tell you what tools I exactly used for this video. For cutting cables, for crimping, pulling cables, for sorting the cable ends out, I used these. If you're only going to do inner cables, you're not going to touch the outer cables, you only need really, you know, some average wire cutters. You don't need to splash out on any bike specific tool. Um, they will cut through the inner cable no problem. I just use a pair of normal pliers just to pull the cable taut and I use a small screw precision screwdriver just to open the ends of the cables. If you are going to be doing outer cable cutting I would suggest you do find something a bit more heavy duty um, because these will not cut through an outer cable not nicely anyway. So a nice pair of bike specific cable cutters will cut inner, outer and you'll be able to spread them and crimp cable ends on. In terms of allen keys I used a tiny one, a 2.5 I think that is, to adjust the brakes. I used a 4mm, I used a 5mm and I used a 6mm. That's all I used on this build. I also used a 10mm spanner, an 8mm spanner, a flathead screwdriver and a 14mm socket with a ratchet wrench. That's all I used in terms of you know, normal garage tools. Um, everyone should have something like that, I think, floating around so you don't have to go out and buy anything. You can also obviously use different Allen key sizes and different spanner sizes and that, but for this bike, that's all I used. To do the chain, chain tool. I think every bike toolbox should have one, they're not expensive. Um, I've had this one for years, this Park CT5, absolutely years, so definitely invest in one. Every garage should have a big adjustable, and that was used to hold the cassette tool. Um, this is again a Park one, a FR 5.2, free, shouldn't be free wheel really, because it's a cassette. But FR is free will. Um, and a chain whip. This is just a bike cut one. Again, I've had this one for years. This is probably one of the first tools I bought. So, those four things we used to sort the chain and the cassette out. To access the button bracket, I first used a pin spanner to take the dust caps off. Once the dust caps, off, once the dust caps were off, I used the 14mm socket to take the bolt out. That followed with a crank extractor, again you do not have to buy park tools um, I used a Halfords one for many years um, until it broke and then I just bought a park one and I've also bro broke a park one so I'm not saying they're indestructible um, once the crank was off I used a C spanner for one side and I used this bottom bracket tool specifically to get both sides off which has a pin spanner on one side and a 36mm specific cup on the other um, and that is the HCW4 I also used a bit of threaded rod um, to secure that tool and a mallet to just loosen it off slightly um, and that is basically everything I used to service the button bracket anything else headset spanner grease, degreaser, um, which for me is white spirits, a bit of bike lube as well comes in handy and where is it? There. Toothbrush, spare toothbrush works wonders for cleaning everything out. Um, yeah and that's the lot. So go through see what you need to buy um, Again, if you're just doing this temporarily, do not buy expensive tools, just buy temporary tools. But if you plan to do them over and over again, get more into it, then it is worth the investment for uh, the more expensive tools. 
So I'm just going around the chain while it's on the bike, just looking for a quick link. There is none, there don't tend to be if this is an original chain, which again I think it's likely to be. So I've just got my chain tool. I tend to, I've had this for years now. This uh, Park Tool CT5 does the job. So just sticking that in a very greasy chain. Okay. That's better. Stick that in a very greasy chain. And just pop the pin out. Keep the chain as well, because we're going to want that to count the links out for the new one. But for now I'm just going to snip off the end of all the cables, release them, and I'm just going to show you with some normal wire cutters. They work fine. For the inner cable that is. And then this, all these tend to be a 5mm Allen key. There okay, you can just pull out the inner cables. Sometimes these old bikes came with thicker brake cables, <laughs> which might prove a pain. Yeah, normal wire cutters can't really handle these. That's what I say. A good pair of bicycle wire cutters do the job nicely if you're going to be using them a lot. 10 mil. Yes, it is 10 mil. And these pads are worn in a strange fashion. They've been hooked under the rim for a little bit, you can see there. I will be putting the original front brake back on. Getting rid of this V-brake. I've just pulled the old cable all the way through. Looks like the adjusters on this were all the way out as well. But you should. Ugh, maybe not. Oh no. Sometimes just the uh, end of the cable gets stuck in there. Just be able to feed it through. And hopefully, yep, yeah, drop the cable out. The exterior is probably going to be hyper overexposed, but what you'll find on these shifters it may vary, but on these XT ones, on the DX ones, there is a small cover just at the back here, which is held on by a tiny, tiny screw. Don't lose the screw. I say as I drop it, but I've got it. I've got it. I'm just prise this cover off. Make sure your shifters are in either f a small ring on the front. Well, small and small actually, yeah first gear on the front and like top gear on the back so seven eight nine whatever and then your cable will just pop right out of there you can just pull it through if 
you do need to remove these grips without damaging them, what I find is if you get a spoke, a wooden skewer, anything thin like that, feed it underneath and just get some spray or water and just work it round. There we go. Slides right off. And that is the original grip that could be reused. Okay, so the chain is off, all the cables are off. Let's get the wheels out. It should just drop out of there. Drop out of there. And to remove the cassette, so we can change that. Just loosen off the skewer, don't lose the spring. Got yourself a cassette removal tool. Uh, mine is the park tool, so it's the FR 5.2. Again, you don't have to get park. Seeing as I'm using a big old Stanley, adjustable wrench, and a Halford by cut chain whip. So the chain whip just goes on, just to obviously, as you're trying to do it, it's going to want to rotate that way. So you don't put it on like that, put it on. The opposite way. There. Ooh. And that is loose. Now I'm going to want to service the bottom bracket as well, so we need to get off the crank set. These caps on the LX and the older generations of Shimano are kind of valuable, so try and keep them in as good a condition as possible. I use a pin spanner to undo them, this one happens to be the Parktool SPA2. Just very carefully undo them. You can, of course, you know, try and budge it with a screwdriver. It sort of works, but you'll ruin the holes on those. So something, try and get something suitable. Um, yeah, maybe even a set of circlip pliers goes in there and just unwind them. Something that doesn't damage the holes. 14 mil, 14 millimeters is your next. <coughs> Goal. So this bolt tends to always be 14 mil, 14 millimeters, um, unless I think maybe Campy do something different with 15. There we go. Just unwind that. And always check in there, because that's come out of that, always check in there for the washer. Because if you put your crank extractor in there, you're just going to crush the washer into the hole and ruin it. So there's always a washer in there. Or there's always something to spread the load of the bolt, whether that be the bolt itself as one piece or a washer, but always double check. And then you're going to do the crank extractor. Um, I tend to use the park tool. CCP22. This is my first one that I've used, the original die cut one, which still kind of works. The handle fell off, but you can still use mold grips on there or uh, adjustable to unwind it. Again, you don't have to spend big bucks. That just threads into there. Make sure you don't cross thread it because they are somewhat fragile in their old age, these parts. Gotta say old age, I'm older than these. 
just and then you wind that in and give it a good press down oh, some of them are tight and then that will come off there we go now again barn brackets can vary the older ones tend to be these sort of ah, cup and cone they are cup and cone what's the saying cup and cone barn brackets where you need a C spanner triple B this one is had it for years oh wow and if they haven't been serviced much like this one they're pretty stiff okay. and then this is where the pin spanner also comes into effect but also, if you get yourself something like this, this one specifically is the part tool HCW4. This side is for the drive side, and then the pins on this side are for the non-drive side. This has not been serviced, this is the original grease, a lot of it, yep. it's going to need some cleaning. Flip it back around and uh, make sure these flats are nice and clean. Get your tool on there and it will move around a little bit so to minimise any risk of slipping when you're trying to put the force on and by the way this undoes clockwise on the drive side so here's a little tip for you to stop this tool from slipping I have a bit of threaded rod nut another nut and two big washers that fill the whole face Washer and nut on that side, poke it through, get your tool on, get your washer on, get that nut on, and get it up nice and snug, it doesn't have to be tight, in fact it needs a little bit of motion in there because as you undo it, it's going to want to, it's going to tighten up so this non-drive side is going to have to be loosened but that tool should no longer slip off so you can get your mallet and just go to town on it there <laughs> just breaks it loose nothing has changed here you are seeing nothing different but the last thing I do want to do before I clean everything down is get this headset out so I can serv service that I just stab myself 
with a tiny screwdriver. There we go. Generally, a six mil. So I've only used a four, five, and six mil Allen key. Sometimes these can be very stubborn, but obviously, as nothing has changed here, you will know that this is easily coming out. There you go. Now the whole handlebars can come off. And then, if you're lucky, this will be loose as well, which it is. Just undo this top cap, take the stack of everything off. Got a cover on there, and then I can unwind this before the rain starts. Be wary of any bearings falling out. Oh, it's hail, it's not rain. There we go. slides out and then you can just on these it's generally cage bearing so take out your cage bearings there'll be one stuck in the bottom as well there we go and then all this is going to need a thorough clean so the bike is stripped um, everything else here can be could be cleaned on the bike of course you can clean it before you take it apart, it's your preference. I just like to make sure everything is off before I do it. Um, this is all going to get cleaned down now with you know, some degreaser, some just normal car wash, and we'll go from there. Polish it up, all the parts as well. The bottom bracket, where is it? These cups, these cups do have rubber seals in them so try and pry those out before cleaning it with any white spirits um, or even braking clutch cleaner because it will affect the seals but you want to make sure these are sparkling same with the wheels clean all those down just clean everything um, and then we can get to reassembling okay when it comes to cleaning 